Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for October 4, 2021 at 7 p.m. Uh, good evening, council, and uh, our citizens as well. Um, Ms. Garner, for a couple of weeks. Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Nowakowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Seven members spread. Thank you, ma'am. And tonight I'm uh, very excited to uh, announce that Mr. Jeff Christmas is here for the invocation. What a wonderful man and a huge help this weekend. So nice to see you again, sir. Uh, he will be doing the invocation. Let's bow. Our gracious and kind Heavenly Father, thank you for another day that you've given us to, uh, here in this case, conduct the city's business. We thank you and are grateful for our council members. We're grateful for their willingness to serve. And we pray that you would grant wisdom throughout the course of the meeting and beyond uh, so that we might conduct ourselves in the best way possible. Thank you for that. Thank you for the great leadership of our festival committee this past weekend. Very grateful that our citizens got to enjoy such a, a great event. Be with us, we pray, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Christmas. Pleasant evening, sir. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Moving on, we need action on the minutes for the uh, work session for 9 20 20. Motion by Mr. Cobb, second by Ms. Agles. Ms. Agles. <laughs> Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. yes. <laughs> Councilman Rodon? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Stay there, he's not in attendance. Okay. Councilman Grimm? Yes. And Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 601. Right, we all need to uh, accept the uh, minutes for the regular uh, city council meeting on so, 2021. Motion by Mr. Kowski, second by Mr. Turkey. Turkey. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Uh, I'm staying, sorry. I'm staying on the minutes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. And Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are also accepted 601. Thank you very much. And we've got communications and none tonight. Mr. Right Make a motion to break the rule of the council to entertain the discussion for a member of the Parks and Recreation Board. Second. I got a couple of complaints. Uh, what I need to be there. Okay, well, in just a minute, he'll call for um, comments from members of the public, and you can speak then. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a motion um, from Mr. Uh, Cook. To break rules of council to discuss and possibly appoint a member of the parks and rec board. Uh, you were the second. I was second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Cobb. All right. To break rules. All right. Okay. Councilman Rebel. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. And Councilman Cobb? Yes. That motion's accepted 7 0. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> um, Ms. Farley, are you prefer to stand back there or would you, would you rather stand? I'm sorry. Would you, are you wanting to stand instead of sit or come yes, up? Yes, I would like to stand. Not a problem. I just want to make sure you were comfortable. I think you're going to have this mask on. Okay. It's crazy. Okay, so. Um, you put an application for the Parks and Rec Board, correct? I did. Okay, so basically what we do at this time now, Council, if you have any questions or comments or, uh, you know, in general, if you'd like to, you know, ask any questions, you are welcome to do so. So I'll just go down the line. Yeah. Well, she'll make a good one because she was on the neighborhood watch. And yeah. she really got involved with that 
I think she'll be a big help on Park and Rec. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rogo. I have no questions. Yes, sir. No. Um, I'll just a couple general questions. Uh, have, you, have you lived in New Colorado for a while? Or? Uh, I've been here 10 years. 10 years? Mm -hmm. Apparently you like it at least a little bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there was no wrong answer there. You could have said no, you didn't like it. I wouldn't have yeah, no, no, no. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't. <laughs> so. uh, I, you know, I wanted to apply because I, I didn't know where the parks were. Right. When I knew this park, but, uh, you know, so now I, I guess there's four parks. So I said, look at the comment. Six. 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 We'll take two. We'll take the two. Okay. Set aside about 40 minutes. <laughs> right. But no, uh, that's all I really had. Uh, I uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to join us. Oh, sure. Thank you. Uh, she's been involved in the community. I, I have no question. Are you sure you can deal with that? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You don't have to that for Okay. As long as you realize. I, yeah, I'm totally impressed <laughs> that you are. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> can I get a name? Uh, yes, uh, Charlotte Farley. Make a motion that we accept her under the park and rec. Motion by Mr. Cobb, second by Mr. Vice Mayor to accept. Okay. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nokowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Motion is accepted 7 0. Thank you, Council. Thank you very much. And uh, I think you've already been in contact with a couple of the members, so <coughs> go, reel, go reel in and get you going. Okay, sounds great. Thank, Thank you very much. You're welcome to uh, stand or sit and for the rest of the meeting. Or... I'll, I'll see how it goes. Okay, no problem. Thanks. All righty. Like I said, it was a busy weekend. I forgot to charge my tablet, so I apologize. Uh, okay, so moving on, same manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Sure. Evening, Council, Mr. members Kick of the public. Mr. Kicker will be in since uh, Mr. Bridge is out on personal business. Yeah, and I would just like to just state to uh, keep Brandy and his family in our thoughts. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, departmental reports will be for at the next uh, Council meeting on October Monday, October 18th. And uh, moving on to informational items. Um, city manager attended the GFOA annual conference. Um, honestly, I don't know what that is. I know it's a lot of city managers that attend, so uh, I guess they're learning a lot. Uh, fixed asset valuation and tracking. Um, basically what that is, is we have a company coming in that will, we already have pretty much all our properties and vehicles listed. What this is gonna do is add those vehicles listed, tag everything with a specific scanning type barcode, so you could go up to that mower, scan it, and it will tell you anything and everything about that mower. Year, when we bought it, how much it cost at that time, and its depreciative value. On top of that is our utilities. We have been today and uh, most of this week collecting like your underground things you don't see, water, sewer, storm, manholes, uh, stuff like that. You know, things that were put in 1938, 1934, 1950, 60, whenever. So they'll calculate all that stuff up, even though we know we don't have some um, cost of what it costs to put in, they have formulas to calculate basically what our assets are for the city currently. And then, um, you know, that helps with insurance, helps with various things or useful life. Uh, moving on, 2020 audit, uh, contracted auditors requested deadline extension to the state. Uh, state approval a new deadline of October 31st, 2021. Uh, upcoming legislation for council approval, uh, codified codification numbering updates uh, for October uh, slash November, and employees generally code section update for October and November as well. And then uh, the last thing on his uh, on Mr. Bridges report is a thank you to all that have sent uh, positive vibes or kind words. It is truly appreciative. And that is all I have for the city manager report. I can entertain any other questions or comments uh, as far as any city stuff. Council, Mr. Grimm. I have a couple of things. The audit has, uh, we filed for an extension. That doesn't indicate problems, does it? Not that I'm aware of it. This is the, the contractor uh, doing it. Um, I haven't heard anything that in-house in of any buzz or anything like that. So 
At this time, I couldn't tell you if there was or was not. Okay. But I, but I could probably, I could find out if there's just something, you know, what it was for. Maybe they're just that busy, yeah. which I, is common. I heard Everybody else is short of help too, so. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, did we have somebody different sweeping the streets this year? Uh, yes, uh, because due to complaints a couple years ago, we decided to go back to a contractor we had previously used. And I can tell you there's a few spots that I'm happy, but the majority of the project I am not happy with. They did a pathetic job. The, and, and I uh, got a con I contacted the salesperson first and just said, hey, letting you know that your operations manager, I will be contacting him uh, Monday or Tuesday to have a meeting out here and show him what did not go well. And before I could do that, I got a call back from him on Friday, and he's waiting for us to schedule to take a look at it. Uh, what's going on? So have we we are. I am well aware of the the mistakes. Have we paid them yet? No. Oh no no no. They, oh, that's. I'll I'll make that decision when it's all said and done. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm done. Uh, I just had a couple with, and I'll piggyback off yours. What I've asked you this before. What's the ballpark price? And I'll let you know it real quick. I'll pop here. What's the charge for the streets? For the it was fifty six hundred. Okay. And then I know that we discussed, I think council showed interest that um, you know, maybe after we do the um, budget talks or get into the, of having it going at least maybe twice or even three times a year, because it's not a very good price tag. I've already included it in for 2022's budget. I sat down with Colleen on Friday morning. Great. Okay. Cool. That's good. Great. So, also, just a, a big thank you to uh, uh, you yourself, Mr. Kitko, because the driveway looks amazing up to Smith Park. It's, it's nice coming in out fast and gravel flying everywhere. Uh, and the streets are uh, awesome job. Thank you very much for putting on that. You're the, welcome. We're trying. And the grants and everything you want to add? Anyone else? All right. I'll move on. Now let's see here. So let's go back <coughs> here. Well, that will take us to comments from members of the public. If anybody has any questions, comments, feedback, please go to the podium and you will need your name and address. And uh, if you would like to you can go first, sir. I'll need you to go to the podium, sir. You just, you go got to step up. There. So we can so we can get you for the uh, record on microphone. Speaker, uh, it'll, just, it'll pick you up. You can just, not just leave it down. Okay, my name is Rusty Shore. I live at 101 West Jefferson Street. I got a couple complaints about the streets on the street at the corner of Main and Jefferson, where I live at, and the other corner when it rains. They need to put a couple holes in the road that might run some of that water down. And another corner is Maine and Washington down there by the gas station, by the shell station. And then the other corner down there by the bank. It's just a bunch of waters. I walk around town and this and that or whatever, and I get splattered and someone drive by or whatever. It's just kind of well, the good news is, um, if you will, uh, Main Street, you know, is a state route, uh, so it'll be uh, Kurt and Carmel and Mr. Kitko that the state will jump in. What's our percentage on that, though? Our percentage? Well, I think what they could do, just for a suggestion, mm -hmm. put a couple of holes in the road, and some of that water wouldn't be so much powered up in the, in the corners of the streets. Can I just fill in a little bit? Uh, so they had to adjust the ADA curb ramps with the signal project, which didn't align with the profile of the current street, which will get changed in July of 2023. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the it's the ADA curb ramps where you have the the domes there with the little it bumps sucks. on them. Yeah. They they hold water, and it was it was to get, it wasn't supposed to be that bad until the new paving project. Um, so what we're looking to do, we're trying to find a small mill to just carve out that little bit. Anything going to be done about the shit or not? I'm sorry. Anything going to be done about it or not? We're trying to answer that question. If you give us a minute, sir. Yeah, it will be repaved in July of 2023. But in the meantime, we are trying to find a uh, a company that will come in and take a little bit of the asphalt out instead of a drilling a hole. We'll take a little bit of the asphalt out and try to get most of that water to drain. 
So it's not going to get done or not? That's not what he said. He's in the process of working on it. I'm in the process of trying to get it done. And then the street... Well, they say that they're, they're going to get the, some of the streets done and then ain't like shit going to happen. Okay, sir, I don't need to have the, the, uh, the language in, in this meeting or in front of the public. So I would ask you to, if you were... If you'd like okay, to, I'm going to be cool about it. That's cool. We just don't need the language. It still makes me aggravated, though. I understand that. But we're trying to answer you, and you keep cutting us off. In 2023, the state will carry most of the, most of the bill to re, redo all of Main Street within the city limits because it is a state route, and that will lead you. It's all in the city limits is what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, within the city limits on Main Street in the areas you were referring to. And another complaint I got, I was driving my, my line mower in town, and I'm going to get a slow-moving vehicle sign, and I, I do business slow, like grass and this and that, whatever. This one officer, I don't know who it was, and um, it might have been you. <laughs> and um, he's very rude about some of the shit that he did. Okay, sir, I'm going to ask you to just hold your comments or... Okay, okay, I'm sorry. But it was very rude, and he gave me a ticket, and it cost me $115, and I think that was very uncalled for. Okay, well, I mean, I can't speak for the situation. I wasn't there. Um, he's the one. But then they, then, they, then they said, well, they sent me a paper in the mail. The license bureau place said, well, if I had a slow moving vehicle sign on my Milan mower and this and that, it'd be okay. So that's what they told me. Yeah, I, can, I mean, I can. Okay, that. Just, so. just for conversation's sake, if you want to brush on it. Yeah, so uh, Stell was driving the wrong way down Main Street. Uh, driving the wrong direction to travel with an unregistered lawnmower on the roadway. Traffic stop was conducted. He was issued a citation for tra traveling on an unregistered vehicle and cut his citation. Uh, uh, thank you, officer. All right. Uh, next. Next. Good evening, guys. I'm Jamie Malingo. I am the owner of 111 East Jackson Street. I live across from the Belt Palm. Bell Manor? Bell Manor. I'm still a newcomer. I'm only one year in this community, coming on October 6th. Very unhappy. I'm now being bullied every morning with B words, A words, W words. I have people coming to me now in the community telling me they feel sorry that I am being harassed because they hear that I'm being harassed. They've seen I've been harassed. <clears throat> and it's a little overwhelming. And it's very insulting for a small community like this. You're larger than the community I come from. And it's very unwelcoming to newcomers coming from a different part of the country. <clears throat> I'm very sorry to say that because I do have a liver transplant grandchild here. I am here for a reason in this part of the country. So what's continuing <coughs> is I'm being harassed now by the city. Did not receive your letter, by the way, until September 16th, the deadline of my construction you wanted completed of my property. I'm unaware of that there must be planning and zoning. Yeah, it would be planning and zoning. It was painting, um, the gravel, um, the roofs, and other things. I see other properties out there not being maintained. I just spent thirty thousand dollars inside that property for for the old um, Bell Manor um, storage houses. They're called. The properties are being upgraded every day. There's money going out every day, thousand. I'm not kidding you. But when I had a young lady come to me two weeks ago who works in this community and told me what was going on at Bell Manor at nighttime, as a single woman, I feel insecure. I expressed it to the officer this evening. I am not secure where I live. I have to carry pepper spray. I have to sleep with a gun. Now, 
he can confirm or do whatever he wants, but that property across the street is not being utilized properly. You have how many apartments in there now? Over 30. We don't have enough parking, the two-car parking. There's how many lots today available? I asked a question, somebody called me from a company called out in Cincinnati, called me, said they're putting the parking lot in my backyard, which I was not aware of. They misrepresented themselves when they sold the property. I did not know there was a parking lot going in my backyard. I, would have, I was trying to purchase that property, by the way, when purchasing the home. Didn't even know the other property came with it. Totally honest, I didn't have no clue. I got a second property until we went to closing and they said, did you know you got the other property? I had no clue. I was more interested to park the RV in the winter time, come home, put my RV in my property, told I can't put the RV on the property, but then I, there was a loophole, so I'm able to put the RV on the property, but now I got a permanent space. The RV's going someplace else, not a big deal. But the harassment is getting overwhelming, and it's getting violent, and I don't need that. Just a minute, Please just put it out. Let's go. Come on. I call it res man. <coughs> I don't know where you guys are going with it, with that complex. I have no clue. But supposedly, um, I sat with Derek and I showed him an email that Josh sent me. He knew about the letter, but I didn't receive the letter because I received, I'm not on a postal route. Which, just out of curiosity, I'm not sure what letter you're talking about, just out of curiosity. It was a letter stating, I didn't even bring it with me, I should have, stating that I needed to have, it's a $100 fine. It's a hundred dollar fine. So I have no clue if I've been fined or not. I've been trying to get a hold of Derek for two weeks, but I had a funeral last week. I had three funerals last week of COVID. Welcome to COVID in the New England area. Last year I lost 16 family members. This year it's so far three. So it was the gravel that I had the patio built, which I had permission to build from Derek. Supposedly, I didn't have permits, according to Mr. Wayne, Rin. But yeah, I have permits. I have a roof permit. I went down to Clark County, got the roof permit. So when someone's making accusations like that, and he knows what's going on, he knew I was getting this letter. I showed him on September 2nd, met with Derek, and he never said anything I was getting a letter. But this letter was issued out in August. So the apartment building at 108 received my mail. They didn't walk it over to my, it was opened. They walked it over to me on the 16th, the day they, I was supposed to be already done with everything. I was unaware of this letter. David admitted that he did look on the system and he didn't see the forwarding address. He admitted that to me afterwards and says, hey Jamie, I didn't see it. I apologize. I was told to mail it out from Randy and Derek. I said, I was just here. They, I just asked permission. I just gave blueprints of what I was doing on the outside of that property. So what is the big deal now? I can't even have the property done because I've got to go to a funeral. I'm leaving <laughs> for a week. Everything's going to stop. Peace out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So at that point, I had no clue. So I tried to contact Derek to tell him. I did leave him a voicemail on that, saying, hey, I'm sorry, I can't be here right now. That's it. I'm just tired of being bullied, and it's getting worse and worse every day. You can't even have a couple, that's why the patio was made on the side, for I didn't have to see their construction workers, or whoever's working on the guy with the white beard, or the other guy. I'm going to defend myself as a woman. And if they want to, they're confronting, walking the street, coming up to me. That's unnecessary. And calling me the B, what's your problem? J Josh says this. 
that's harassment. I should be able to walk the street here and do what I want to do as a citizen and go and come. I spend 20 to $40 a day over at our, our beautiful Penny Cafe. Love that place. I eat my lunch there every day. I have two cups of coffee a day there. I bring friends. Man, that's a person utilizing our community. Go to the Mexican restaurant, Mexican store. That's a person utilizing this community. I don't do retail, large retails. You don't see me in Walmart. You don't see me at the other big stores. You see me in the mom and pop stores. Because what am I brought up in? A mom and pop community. And that's why I moved here. Because this is supposed to be the mom and pop community. And I find this very insulting with people like that. Okay, so what I'll say is, I don't, I'm not, is this, this conversation go on forever, and I'm sure not everybody in here wants to sit through it. I, I have no problem sitting down and talking about it. I, I know, you know there's always two sides to a story. I, I, we've talked before. Um, I, I, you know, I've talked with uh, a lot of city administration about a lot of the issues you're talking about. I'll just say there's two sides of your story. I'm not saying that you're saying anything that isn't true or I is true. I contacted you with the pictures. And yeah, was those I, not I, legitimate? The, they were legitimate. There's, there's pictures, but there's also things that I have questions about that I, you know, a picture is a picture. There's also things that go with those pictures. I've, I've heard voicemails, I've seen emails that have been left by you that paint a very, you know, say, colorful picture, you know. And I know some of the city administrators, they do not want to deal with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis just because they feel uncomfortable talking to you because of the way they feel they are being painted in an unfair and, and you know, like, if you will. Um, so that's what I'm saying. There's always two sides of the story. I'm not sitting here and I'm not calling you a liar and I'm not calling the city administration. I don't have to lie. And that's I'm, one I'm thing. I'm not saying you are. I'm not saying you are. That's I'm one thing. I'm trying to answer this as professionally as I can. I pay the taxes. I, I'm a homeowner. I am a good homeowner. I keep the house well maintained. But what I will say is. And I don't have wild parties. I don't have, as a single woman, man, I could I'm be bar hopping I'm at my age. We're getting off the. Off the topic here. I, what, what, and I was going to actually mention this tonight. I didn't know he was coming. I was going to mention this to the council when he got to the business. I was actually surprised to hear. Um, during the festival, I'd actually had two people that lived on bike say that uh, that they felt that actually the, the apartment situation has improved, which is which is good. Now, I can't say if they're right or wrong. I don't live mm -hmm. back there. But, you know, we've had nothing but complaints since it started. And, I, and I, it's, a, it's a real unfortunate situation. But to hear any kind of positive feedback about is a step in the right direction. You know, I don't live back there, they do. I have two separate people with two separate houses that live back there that stop me during the festival. I think it's actually going in the right direction for the first time, which is great news. I don't know what it is that, you know, they said that there wasn't the loud, um, you know, music that they would like sometimes have out on the front, you know, main areas and things like that. Nature. So that I'll say is I'm going to take that and, and run with it and hopefully we can continue that going. Um, but, uh, as far as that, I mean, you listen to a lot of stuff. I mean, I mean, we could sit here and spend two hours talking about it. If you would like to sit down, what I'll say is if you'd like to sit down and have a, a meeting with, say, Randy once he's back in town from a uh, family business and issues he's having, uh, you know, and have a couple of council members, I'd be open to it. Not a problem. Uh, you know, it would just take more time, and, and it would be more proactive and productive to do it with, with you, the city, the city manager maybe. I am that. videotaping it now. Well, it's getting recorded. Today. No, I am videotaping on the property now because it, the walking and the trespassing, oh, oh, the profanity, them going back and forth on the profanity. It's overwhelming. I'm walking to a truck. You don't need to call me the B word or the W word. But you don't even know me. <laughs> so, like I said, if you want, I, I will get back with Randy when he gets back into town, you know, back to work. And talk to him about it, and you know maybe you know council has heard what you said tonight. If a couple of them would like to volunteer to be in in a meeting, we can all have a sit down and, and, and go over some issues. I mean, you know, I don't want to ignore it at all. I mean, but I just think it means it's proactive to do it with city administration and council and see what we can come up with. 
Sounds good. All right. Thank you very much. As soon as Randy gets in town, I'll, I'll uh, thank you. And I've jotted some notes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. And we're still up here. Comments from members of the public. Anyone else? Did you have something? Maybe that. Comment. You have anything? Yeah. Anything city related? Just when you go to the podium, we'll need your name and address, address for the rest. Hi, I'm Samantha Graybill. I live at 103. Fourth. One more time, you're first over time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm deaf. So, my name is Samantha Graybill. I live at 103 Orth Drive, also known as Meth Avenue, but that's beside the point. Um, so, what I'm here about is I'm deaf. Unless y'all want a lot of other deaf people in this community, we need to shut down things like that motorcycle rally that happened downtown over the weekend where we have loud pipes, and we are encouraging loud pipes. So children um, should not be exposed to decibels higher than 70. Okay, Adults should not be exposed to decibels over 85. Harley-Davidson is not allowed to send motorcycles off of their assembly line with decibels more than 80. Okay, it's against the federal law. But we, as a community, encourage those pipes to roar and rumble as loud as they can. And what happens is those pipes aren't naturally that loud. So what causes loud pipes? I'm gonna tell you. It's because the, where the, the noise comes from is short in motorcycles because coming from the air manifest in, out, and it not being um, in, in an enclosed thing. Like your car motor isn't as loud because it's under a hood, okay? But in the exhaust system in a motorcycle is very short. In your car, it's much longer. So that's why your car isn't as loud as a motorcycle. And I know people are going to say, oh, loud pipe saves lives. Great. You know, I'm all for those loud pipes when they're not all where children are, OK? The state of Ohio has said that a city can adopt um, a thing, and I'm going to read it to you. This, a city can adopt a thing, and it says that, I put it in my photograph so I can, Local authorities may adopt a maximum sound level of 82 decibels at 0 to 35 miles per hour or 86 decibels at 35 plus miles per hour. Okay. Those decibels were far exceeding 86 decibels and they were doing zero. How many children were at that festival? Too many to be exposed to that type of thing. Yes, great. Abe's Hidden Treasures was doing a great thing and doing something or helping somebody. But are we really helping if we're making our community deaf or hard of hearing? Do you know what it costs to be deaf? <coughs> because I can tell you. I've been deaf for over 20 years. Okay, I'm, I'm profoundly deaf. I have a service dog that's $30,000. Hearing aids on the cheap side are $3,500 every three, four, five years, okay? Just so that I can possibly hear anything that somebody has to say, okay? Why are we allowing this as a community? This isn't the first year it's happened, okay? I've been there before. So I live on Orth in the cul-de-sac, okay? You could hear it at my home, okay? I could hear it at my home, and I'm deaf, okay? My friend lives on Villa. She could hear it at her home. That's crazy. Do we understand that's crazy? Okay? When we, it, I mean, this is just, this is crazy. As a community, we have the right to call the NEA, which is the Noise Enforcement Agency, and their number is 1-800-CALL-NEA, or 1-800-225-5632, that's what it says. It doesn't give me any other numbers, but 
you know what, if that's what we need to do as a community, that's what we're going to do. But you know what, the federal government says Harleys are only allowed to leave that assembly line at 80 decibels. We're encouraging as a community. If you're encouraging as a community, you're liable, okay? So that's what I have to say. I think it needs to be shut down. What I'll say on that is, is I think at, a, at some point, I mean, because where do you draw the line? I mean, you can name off probably a, a hundred, you know, football, good if it comes to a football game, it is loud. If someone scores a touchdown, it's, it's over the desk, as you mentioned. Fireworks are just as loud. Um, I, I had all this on while you were talking, but I mean, there's so many things that are loud. So at it, 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 the point where we worry about our children, if, if that is a concern, and I am not saying it's not a concern, as a parent, if you, okay. hold on, let me think. Let me think. Okay. So if, if I'm concerned about my, you know, for example, my son who, let's say, he, I don't have a son that's just young, but let's say he's five years old, and I don't want him to be exposed to loud noise, I'm not going to let him, I'm not going to take him to a car show or a bike show or a fireworks show or it comes to a football game or a, uh, I love NASCAR. My kids have hearing protection on when we go to NASCAR. I have hearing protection when I go to NASCAR race. So there, I'm sure there are laws that, are, that, that say that a bike can't leave a factory, but I mean, everything's customizable. I mean, it's, it, at some point, it becomes, if, if you don't want people to be subjected to that, I mean, I know it's not that loud at the other side of town, but when you're deep down in, into the race, the football game or whatever it may be, then it becomes, in my opinion, the responsibility of the parent of that child. I mean, so many Ooh. things, so many things are as loud or, or equally as loud or dangerous to your ear. No. So should we all just stop visiting the Heritage of Flight Festival? No, no. Because, oh, you know, oh. I visited the Heritage Flight Festival and I had no clue it was going to happen, okay? And all of a sudden it happened. And do you know what my hearing aids sounded like in my ears? Oh my gosh, they went crazy. And I am ripping them out of my ears so that I am profoundly deaf again. And so now I, I, I hear nothing that anyone can say. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When, when we have fireworks, those fireworks are way off in the ground, out in the air, okay? They're not 20 feet from these children. I understand. And that is irresponsible but, as a community. But, irresponsible. But it's also announced. And I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the loud. Okay, as, as a deaf person, I can't hear announcements. So are you going to have somebody at the community uh, come out and say, hey, we're hey, talking, and sign to me? But we're talking about children. You're talking about children. So let me, I'm trying to answer that. So if it's a if, if you're talking about young children who can hear and parents or a parent or one of the parents that are allowing them up there can hear announcements and it's on the schedule, then you either, as soon as you hear that it's announced, you get them over there. Mike, well, I have a question for you. Yeah. Okay. I, I, this is a serious question. <clears throat> When that first gentleman came up here, you defended your position, okay? When the second woman came up here, you defended your position. I am here and you are defending your position again. You are not listening with two ears. Maybe you were exposed to too much motorcycle noise over the weekend because you are failing to hear what I have to say. I hear exactly what you're saying. I, do. I, know. I am saying okay. that we are expressing, we are, we are, oh my gosh, we are targeting these children that me? are not, not have any clue that they, I that the decibels that. are so loud. You're saying that I didn't, you don't, the, uh, the lady who left last, you don't know the inside information on that, but what, we've been dealing with her for a long time, so it's not my position, it's a city position that's been dealt with. I just think there's a more diplomatic way to handle things than do it. You are handling them. Not and I'm not personally attacking you. I am sitting here as a witness. Okay. Fair enough. Ms. Hagels. Or, yes, Ms. Nokowski. Sorry. <laughs> um, I live on Main Street. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any choice. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely horrible. Uh, there ought to be, if it requires the city in, enacting a law that says you cannot have a vehicle that makes that kind of noise well, in there's, town. There's noise ordinances. Right. That they need to be enforced. Mm -hmm. 
because it was, I mean, I shut everything down and it was loud. Why can't we move that out to the hold, airport? Hold, 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 hold on, let me have counsel after. Oh, would you finish? Yeah. Miss Hagel, we'll just go down one. Miss Hagel, do you have anything? Is for 10 minutes. One day a year. And it was to benefit. Peggy, I can't hear you. You got to look at me. It was for 10 minutes, for one day out of the year, to benefit Toys for Tots. And they can't do that at the airport? The airport is in the city. The airport. So I, it's oh, in the city where we have noise ordinance and you're in. We're supposed to move the part of the Heritage of Flight Festival out to, out to the airport. Just the motorcycle part. That's what I just said. Move part of the fe yeah. festival out to the airport. I, I don't see how that's... It's for 10 minutes for one day out of the year. And look at what that festival brings to this city. What look did you, what didn't you tell me that? the people that it brings into this city that visit our merchants, that visit all of our stores, that spend their money here. Hmm. You can't give up 10 minutes once a year. So we're going to jeopardize our children okay. for 10 minutes for... Mr. Grimm. I live 250 feet from where that happened. And in front of my place, 250 feet away, I measured the 88 decibels. It's what? 250 feet away, I measured 88 decibels. Mm -hmm. um, 100 decibels, you can lose your hearing. 120 decibels can kill you. Uh, you could... I don't see why we have to have a contest on who can be the loudest. Exactly. Because it's totally obnoxious, and I heard dozens of complaints. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do away with the motorcycles altogether. We just need to do away with the with the contest portion of it where it's loud. And I'm not saying you know we'll, we'll be having a festival meeting as in the festival committee here, and probably the end of the week. And I will bring it up to them. It's it's not my decision. It's you know. Our festival committee does everything by vote, you know. So I will, like I said, by all means, I'll tell them. So the festival, there. what you're saying is, so you can bring that to them, but it's their decision to break the law for the noise ordinance. It's their, yeah. I mean, if the committee wants to hold a, an event. <laughs> okay, so next year, prior to the festival, I'm going to encourage all my friends to call the um, NEA. Call NEA, 1-800-CALL-NEA, and let's get them here so that we can document this. Mr. Vice Mayor, I'm going to go down to the rest of the line. Well, I think, number one, that the young lady is well over for five minutes. I understand her thoughts. However, if she were to live on Zimmerman Street, where I live, there are particular days. Yeah, I can't hear you. You look down and talk. I've got to stand closer to you. There are particular days that I live on Zimmerman Street that the amount of motorcycle traffic up and down Zimmerman Street with loud pipes is just as atrocious as what it is. However, these deputies cannot be at every location at every time. Now, I think if the committee will take it on themselves to possibly limit that noise and also make it a point to talk to the motorcyclists and let them know that the revenue of the motorcycles is not desired. It's not that. It's the it's the loud it's the loud portion of the contest that I am I'm and, and trying to eliminate here. Because we're all, I mean, so we are just intentionally revving them up to be loud. That's what I'm against, right there. Okay, but again, this goes back to the committee, what the committee will set up and do. So let them do their work. Let's see where we come at from there. Okay. Mr. Roybal. I, I, I don't really have anything else to add except for, I would, okay. Sorry. 
Um, I would definitely like to hear from Mr. Lowry and, and, and the Heritage of Flight Committee uh, after their meeting about what uh, what they decide to do with with that portion of the, of the show. Um, you know, I, I could hear it from Lake Street. Um, I would almost prefer the west of town as you can get. Um, and, and I can hear it from there. Um, I love the bikes. The bikes are fantastic. I love everything that the festival has to do and what it brings to the city. Um, but I understand your concerns. Um, I truly do. Um, I'm not a big, loud motorcycle guy. I hear them constantly going up and down Lake Street. It, it's, I'm not against motorcycles. I'm just against that portion of I understand. The yes, no. Thing. Nope. But I, I would say before, before council steps in, I, I would say let's let, let's let the festival committee make sure. I mean, they've heard they've heard the uh, the issues. They 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 they've gotten I think the point. Um, and and now that Mike knows, Mr. Lowry, Mayor Lowry knows, uh, there's no better person to know to take to the festival committee than, than Mike. Thank you. I agree with what you're saying about the children. I'm deaf myself. I listen to diesel engines all my life. But you got to take consideration. We've got law enforcement that has a siren on their car. They're allowed, even when they shoot by the kids. Fire department, engine, medic, they got sirens. They're loud. We got truck traffic moving down through Main Street. They got loud exhausts. So what you're saying is you want to stop all noise completely. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that this is an on-purpose noise. Those are emergency vehicles which are aimed at catching attention to have people move or yield. Okay? There's a difference. And those vehicles are in motion. Okay? Remember, I said that the state of Ohio says that communities can adopt these things where 82 decibels for 0 to 35 and 86, I think it is, for 35 plus. Okay, so these emergency vehicles are in motion. These motorcycles are stationary and rev it up more than that. That's my point. Are you sure they're not coming into the... No, there's a contest. Did you not attend the festival? No. There's a contest in it for loud pipes. Okay, loud pipes. And they sit there and they rev those engines just intentionally to create the loudest noise. And that is what I'm thinking about. May I make a suggestion, Mayor? Sure can. When the committee meets, would you invite her to attend that to express herself? Not our first meeting, because it'll be all about you know, numbers and how we do Well, when you go to discuss this, this will give you a chance, I'm sorry, this will give you a chance to talk to the entire committee. I would love to have a talk to you. I will, like I said, we're going to have our first meeting, it's our wrap-up meeting, and we're going to you know, go over everything that happened at the festival, all our info, and finances, and things like that, and, I, and I'll bring this situation up as well, and then we'll go from there. I mean, they may just say, okay, fine, we'll drop it. And then, I, I mean, I've seen you on Facebook, I can shoot you a message or something, and get a hold of you, and let you know what you're Oh, okay, well, there you go. So, that'll work? Good. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Under... You know, I, I thought we. I'm about ready to hang on. Motion, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Hey now, I haven't been up here in a while, guys. Uh, name and address, please. Brandy hey. Mullet, five two two Hamilton Avenue. So I'm. She left, but I'm gonna piggyback. I'm deaf in one ear. You know, I wear a hearing aid. If I take my hearing aid out and I close this ear, I can't hear anything. But I also am an avid supporter of motorcyclists and motorcycle enthusiasts, and that's part of the draw. You know, people buy bikes and they customize them. It's no different than the car show. It's no different than the cruisins on Monday nights. People get those hot rods up there. They are custom built for that purpose. I mean, they're designed to be that way. I was not aware because I wasn't able to attend. I didn't know that there was a loud pipes contest. Um, it is loud. The first year he did it, I remember, I was down by uh, McFadden's lot, 
And when they did it, the whole, it, was, it was actually really thing. You see, the whole street goes, you yeah, know, looking at it. But it, it is, it is loud. I'm not saying it's not. And I completely agree with what you said. It is not the city's responsibility. It is not the committee's responsibility to protect our children's hearing from that. The agenda, the, the, the flyer for the committee was posted on Facebook. People repeatedly asked, what day is this? What time is that? So it, the information is out there. People know when these things are happening. And if you don't want your kids to be exposed to it, don't take them down there during that time. Now, I mean, for you, that matter. Let me ask you a real quick question, because I, I didn't want to ask her, because she was just getting a little excited. As a person who has a hearing issue, if you were into a situation like that, and you didn't know it was a context like that, so they start cracking pipes, you have a ear condition. It might, is it safe to say, OK, this is hurting me. I can cover my ears and walk away. My. Yeah, I mean. Okay. Yeah, and and, saying, and for me, would that be the logic step to take if it was something that was uncomfortable. I agree, and for me personally, like my hearing aid has, and this is not new technology. I've had my hearing aid over ten years now, but my hearing aid has technology to where even if I turn the music up too loud in the car, mm -hmm. it automatically shuts off. Okay. So I cannot. It does not get anything into this ear. Okay. But yes, I completely agree that if you come across some, I mean, Friday night for the car show. All the cars, generally, fire up to leave at about the same time. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that those are probably going to exceed the however many decibels, 36 or whatever she mentioned for the limit. But on that token, a gas-powered lawnmower is 80 to 85 decibels. Wow. Are we going to tell people not to mow their lawns anymore, like because a kid might be outside and exposed to it? I just don't. Maybe the maybe the easy solution is take it to the committee and say, hey, oh, yeah. maybe we just need to vote and nix the the loud pipes. But there's and I won't name names. There's, there's, shot, there's someone that lived in that area. I won't name names. Somebody maybe I forgot, but I am shocked that they, that is one of their favorite parts of that event. Someone down there that you would never expect to say it loves that part. I won't say that. Not me. Just that. But anyways. But yeah, and no, I, and I will. I'll take it to the committee and I'll. I'll point that concern out and they can do you know as a group how everything's done is by a vote yes I, I live on south main and the cars are in front of my house the motorcycles are in front of my house does it really upset my dog when they start revving it up yes but it's for 10 minutes mm -hmm. once a year and the money that that festival brings into our city. I, I, well, there's always room for you know, adjustments and improvements there, there too. We can, we can make adjustments, we can make improvements, but I mean, yeah, that's like, you know, let's call it, you know, let's quit doing the cruising because the cars are out. Change the contest to quietest pipes. There you go. <clears throat> There you go. Right. Mr. Cobb, and then we're going to do, unless you had something else on the same subject. Um, I've got 39 <laughs> seconds left, so I was just going to stand here and look pretty. <laughs> All right, Mr. Cobb, thank you. What's she saying? That they, they revving the engines up down there? It's, it's who can have the loudest motorcycle contest. And whereabouts is this done on the street? They think they line them up right at the intersection of Main 571. I wasn't down there, but. Yeah. They line them all up. So let's just say there's 10 bikes. They line them all up evenly, and they can start here, and you rev as loud as you can. He goes to the next light as loud as you can, and on down the line, and then the judges, I don't, I've never been down there, I don't know if they have meters or just by ear, and they judge who is the loudest All right, let me make a suggestion to my mic that you can pass on to the committee. Okay. Bring them down there between Jefferson and Washington, where you got the building, it's going to take quite a bit of the noise away. It will barricade the noise. You've got the Masonic Temple, yeah. the, there's a dry cleaning there on the corner? Yeah. There used to be a dry cleaning yeah. there. And then you got right Aid, them buildings will right. break right. a lot of the sound. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely look at it when we have our meeting and discuss it. Right in front of me? Well, behind you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, what, what, was, what was the decibels for death? 
one, that's the goal, 122. <laughs> they were, I measured 88 at 250 feet. Okay. I didn't go any closer. <laughs> All right, anyone else, public comments? Anyone? First meeting back, you guys just throw me some curveballs. <laughs> I told you, you to adjourn this. <laughs> Uh, Judy Bible, 806 White Pine Street. First of all, I want to say I thoroughly enjoyed the festival. They did a great job. As for the motorcycle thing, I agree with Brandy. A. You agree with him? With Brandy. Oh, oh Brandy. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I had to. And as Peggy said, it's 10 minutes once a year for a good cause. And it is not the city's responsibility to take care of the children. Yes, it is the city's responsibility to have laws that protect them from things like really bad things. But as far as that contest goes, I kind of have a feeling there's something else behind her complaint. And I won't expand on it right here. I know. I, I thought about bringing it up, but I'm not. But yes. I would agree with you. And I think that is the driving force behind a lot of what she's complaining about. I, I agree. So and that's all I got to say. Thank you very much. I forgot one thing. No, rope your five minutes. Does anybody know what the cost is? I think it's 10 there. 10 there. And that the last one that was in the afternoon had to wait for that. Yeah, it was still there. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Scott, come on, you guys. We're on a roll here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't let Bonnie call. Don't let Bonnie call. Motion is adjourned. Hold on, we're not through the agenda yet. No. Uh, so we are down to uh, comments from members of the public. Committee reports on tonight. <coughs> Resolutions none. Ordinances none. That is amazing. Uh, any uh, other business? Um, city offices will be closed Monday, October 11th to observe Columbus Day. A trick or treat will be set for Saturday, October 30th, 6 to 8 p.m. So make sure you stock up on greasy cups. Those are the best. Uh, open discussion for city related matters. I was going to say one thing before we jump into the motion adjourned, but is there anyone else happening? I did. Um, I was uh, what we do work sessions only when needed. Like if we have heavy topics. Um, that would be, I, I think yeah. that would be something. And I think actually you or someone else and Randy mentioned that before. Yeah. We have only yeah, had Move the regular session to six and then just schedule work sessions as we need it. Right. Yeah, I think Randy, so I think once Randy gets back, I think we bring that up to the next meeting in the 10 minutes. Okay. So I agree, though. Thank you. And I did want to thank the Heritage Flight Committee. It was, you guys said that it was going to be bigger and better, and you came through with bigger and better, and it was an amazing festival. I don't know how you guys did it, because the little bit that I did, my feet hurt like, <laughs> and I died when I got home, yeah. and I didn't do anything near what the rest of you guys did, so well, thank I want to thank you. It was an amazing thing. Thank you. We have on the schedule for Saturday the coffee and donuts with council down at 101 South So if you all want to stop in, shoot the breeze with one of us, have a donut, a cup of coffee, you know, stop in to the farmer's market. Same time, you know, you're more than welcome. I think we've got it under control. And that was 9 to noon, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What are we doing? 9 to 11? 9 to 12. 9 to 12. 9 to 12. Who's on duty for the sheriff on Saturday? <coughs> Which deputy's on duty Saturday? All of them. They heard donuts were there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take offense that. When Darwin was at the last one, we, we hit him hard. So it's not personal. I have. I will eat a donut in uniform any day. <laughs> <laughs> no qualms about it. Anything else? Mr. Grant? The festival was incredible. Uh, yes, and I was up and down the whole period, two of the days with two grandkids. They had a great time. 
Um, I was a little concerned that there were as many vendors or as many uh, food banks as we had in the past. But I'm sure that will uh, come around. Mm -hmm. um, we had incredible weather. We lucked out. I was told that that day before in other parts of the city, yeah. but not on Main Street. Yeah. Um, keep up the good work, guys. Mm -hmm. Bueller? Um, yeah, so I just want to say I talked to him a little bit. Thank you, uh, not just our festival committee, but to those that helped, like I said, Mr. Grimm helped, Andrew helped. Uh, there was a lot of people there. Uh, the city workers, even though there's not, you know, we try to announce that a lot during the festival. You know, you'll see a lot of people complain after the festival. We can't get our streets fixed, but they can put on a festival. It's not put on and paid for by the city of Utah at all. Yes, we do get a little manpower from them to help us put stages up and get barricades set out and things of that nature. But the Heritage Flight Festival, and the, the amazing businesses of the city of New Carolina support it. And you know, the festival goes themselves that buy 50-50 uh, you know, tickets and buy the food and the, you know, all the different things. Uh, you know, with, without the businesses and the supporters of the festival, we wouldn't have a festival. So, big thank you. Mr. Mr. Griffith from Lee's, he's one of our biggest sponsors and uh, long time sponsors. He's, he's an amazing person. And I don't want to forget Tecumseh and their help from the ROTC and the FF, uh, the guys from the kids from FFA. Uh, they're the ones that are sweeping the streets as soon as we open after a long night of car show with food and cigarette butts all over the place. And they, uh, are, we, we couldn't do it without them. I mean, you, could, you couldn't do it without any aspect of the committee or the fire department or the police. But, you know, they, they're the ones that make it, you know, as clean as possible. So a big thank you to them. And, you know, they don't get anything out of it other than a pat on the back and a thank you. We do feed them. Scott helps us feed them. Thank you. So a big thank you. Yes. I wanted to ask if... Um you were the one that arranged to have the pile of manure put in front of my house on the street. It wasn't there Friday or Saturday, but it was on Sunday. Was it in a bag? No. Was it, was it a buyer? <laughs> I will not I answer that while on public record. <laughs> I told Dale to hide that poop cover. <laughs> Mr. Cobb. I did. I want to ask a question, and I know some of the committees here, but if the city's involved in it, where all these people talk, where's our cut? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sales revenue. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else before we wrap it up? Most people. I do have a quick question. Who was the young lady that sang the anthem at the bus stop? Was she was oh. bad. I forget her name, uh, Mr. Ed uh, Roy from uh, Ed's Ed Treasures. He's hired her for the past couple of years. She's wow. from. Since an, I, I forget how to say it wrong. You can give me a Leah uh, or something. She's amazing. Yeah, between her and the bagpipes, I was like, okay, I'm not to start crying. Can you stop? So, but she did it. She does a great job. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. second. We'll take Mr. Grimm as the second. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rodwell? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Motion to adjourn accepted 7 0. Thank you. Thank you.